the uh, semiconductor technology has three driving forces and uh, these are three ones which shown here. The first of course is the uh, transistor technologies. Transistors are used in mostly in logic as well as analog RF um, systems. But apart from these major transitions, transistors you make, there are other two technologies which is driving semiconductors now. One is of course the memory technology or DRAM technology as it is called and uh, all of you know how much DRAMs are now available. Variety of DRAMs have come, NV DRAM, DD DRAM and many of them, they are just variants. So the dynamic memories are very, very uh, strong contenders for changes in normal technology of ICs and uh, that is why there is a lot of different research goes on in DRAMs or memories in particular. And the last but not the least is the current trend for last so many years now is to create a non-volatile memory which is called flash. Uh, flash essentially stands for uh, uh, erased by all together. It is not electronically, it is electronically erased but erased all the bits are erased in one go. And one is trying to see that the excess time of these memories are as good as SRAMs if possible, maybe SRAMs will have to go then. So these three different uh, kinds of technologies are current trends for which the efforts have been tried at many years. Just to give an idea what is essentially a fabrication details which is this course is going to address. So I may just tell you we start with some semiconductor in this case say we are making an n-channel device and because it is n-channel device we start with p-silicon then we grow silicon dioxide by oxidation then we deposit silicon nitride and over which we have a photoresist. The word photoresist will be clear to you when I do lithography later. The idea is like uh, if you have seen a normal photo film, there is some kind of emulsion coated there. It is like a resistor essentially. So when you shine light through some object, the light does not pass through the object and therefore the rest of the material actually receives uh, light and there are two kinds of resist we use one is negative other is positive. In one case if it is negative the resist which is essentially a polymer actually hardens, hardens means it does not get etched in normal etchants. Whereas the PPRs are positive photo resist essentially are the materials they are also resins, this cross link resins and these resins whenever they receive light they actually break their links and therefore etchable. So both kinds of patterns are used, one with PPR, one with NPR and we will see this is of course uh, apparently it is sees that we are actually using NPR but can be used either PPR and NPR depends on the mask we create. The word, word mask is very important in the sense the object in the case of photo is equivalently on a glass plate I create a pattern and if I have a darker area light does not pass, the clean areas of glass light passes. So wherever the light does not pass this resist below is soft, so it is etchable. So I can create a window inside the black region by in the oxide because then I can edge the rest of the oxide or small oxide whichever way mask is used and therefore I can create windows in the silicon or uh, silicon dioxide that is called masking. So there are number of there are minimum masks shown here are 5, simplest NMOS transistor can be made using 5 mask. Currently as I say CMOS ICs require 32 to 36 mask. So one can imagine the amount typically 1 to 5 million dollar per mask is the cost. Okay, so you can see if you add a mask, you can imagine how much money industry has to invest. Okay, so the way it is done is that then we actually use the areas which I want something to happen. I can protect that or if I do not want that area to be used then I will etch that out. So in this case I have done using the resist, I have actually done boron implants and if I do boron, boron cannot go through this resist area and the rest places the boron goes and goes down the way because of energy much below here. These are called P channel, uh, P plus areas one can create, these are called channel stoppers. So the first masking is done for what we call channel stoppers. We will see this in actual technology. Then we further do additional by etching this area, we do further additional boron implants by putting an oxide on the before. So there is an oxidation step here. 
as I say you may not be appreciating immediately but then we deposit polysilicon over it and again etch it. So poly would have been deposited everywhere but only this part is retained by a mask by etching this technique, masking techniques. So you have a poly gate, then I actually implant arsenic to make N plus drain and source. Uh, resist is good enough for normal implants so we do not etch many times many things, we will show you later. Then we actually deposit oxide again thick one, okay. then create windows for connection, metal connection to source and drain into the gate. So we open window here, put contact metals, etch the pattern wherever you want and you get. So this lower portion which I show here are actually composite mass. This is the pattern actually you see on silicon. But there are a number of masks. You can see the first mask which I was doing, this area, the upper, maybe I do not know whether the big, bigger portion of this is the window which I actually opened, which you can see uh, this was the area which was blocked. So that is the area which is total area is what I first created. Inside then I did some kind of channel implants with this area and then I opened source drain windows. Okay, so these are source drain. I opened a contact gate. So gate was done by this mask okay, and this mask. So each mask actually should get aligned with the earlier ones. So wherever you want that this to come you must align. So you need a process called mask uh, whenever I do is lithography in which I actually through, through a microscope and align the patterns okay and then only I expose the light there okay. So do this, this is essentially very important lithography is the major crux of all processes okay. So having done this, so to, then you open a contact windows for ma source, drain and gate so you can see here and then for finally the last mask is the metal mask which connects. Now this is the process step which is as I said a 5 mask process and later as I say at least I will show you 16 mask standard CMOS process but as of now there may be some processes or some chips which may require as high as 32 mask okay. Okay so next is so I yesterday already said we have all kinds of process steps which are required to deposit material, oxidize, diffuse, implants, incorporation selectively is the basic feature of all IC technology. I want to make N plus certain area so all other area should be blocked and only that should be opened. So this is essentially the feature. The smallest feature which I can do any processing is called the node what is the number we used to give 32 nanometers with assumption that the smallest uh, uh, whatever dimension I can create is 32 but that is not really true these numbers were earlier when we were working on 0 0.25, 0 0.13 microns. Nowadays the gate oxide is for a third 22 nanometer process is 16 nanometers. For 16 nanometer process only 9, okay. 11 it may be 5. So we will see that these numbers are not really matching. Earlier this was the smallest dimension. If I say 5 micron process which means the smallest dimension I can print on silicon is 5 by 5 microns. Okay. This is how designer sees. Designer see what is the minimum feature it has. So now this node does not say anything about features though we still keep carrying because of Moore's law business 0 0.7, 0 0.7. So we kept on naming the nodes like this but in reality these numbers have no direct relationship to the feature sizes. So these are the process steps which is this course is going to look into uh, lithography, CVDs, PVDs, dry etching, diffusion, implant, anneals and characterization. Uh, people always ask where is the use of ICs, uh, so much money is in pump 10. Well all of you are working with portable electronics, PCs are one, wireless based systems like my mobile and others or what is called uh, handheld system PDAs. Uh, the basic application is the cost of IC which you create. A typical microprocessor may cost around $160, okay, uh, Pentium 4 for example with the latest version. But older version 80, 85 may be available to in 160 rupees. Okay, so the question is that as technology advances, the cost of chip also increases, and this is slightly difficult to understand. We would say, "Oh, I make bigger things, so I will get smaller money." No, it's not. 
because the investment on a process line as I said last yesterday it may be 8 billion dollars to 10 billion dollars per node. So if I sh some, somebody says shift from 32 nanometer to 22 he is investing 8 billion dollars okay for the next line. But if he wants to keep the old lines he is unnecessarily spending money so he will actually start charging them also because otherwise that line cannot be sustained. Please remember typical run in a uh, in, in uh, any semiconductor industry has at least 250 wafers of 12 inch size. In one run 250 wafers actually go into the furnaces and so how much heat cycle it must be having to maintain temperature from 800 to 1200 degrees. So huge thermal budget is required. Uh, so much etching goes on, so much processing is goes on, roughly it industry requires 54,000 gallons of water per day just to maintain your fab line. Okay. So the why I am telling you cost because all these processes are good or bad design. When I am teaching a design course I keep saying design is as good as what customer want in a minimum money. Okay. That is what the best, best is nothing called best because you can always improve something but at the cost if the money goes high no one buys it. So the game is what is best for a customer in a smallest amount of money is the best design and best technology. Okay. So never say oh you have to be there, you do not have to be if the money is this much, customer specs are only this much, use as bad as technology available but it satisfies. Okay. The sec third problem in all applications are reliability and uh, this is major worry because if you are using a chip and every third day chip blows then no one will buy your chips. So there is a reliability issue, it should stand to at least minimum lifetime, maybe let us say at least few years, 5 years or 4 years. So the test has to be uglier performed for reliability, reliability is defined as the specs remaining same for a given lifetime, given time. So if spec changes, no one buys the chip, okay. So there are issues like reliability which cost actually hell of, time, hell of a time. Then there is also a problem in design which is has to be taken care of by technologist is signal integrity. You may enter some data which may be say 3 gigahertz signal but internally it is not reaching 3 gigahertz because of the RC, RC time constants inside. So your whole trick that you are pushing a signal of 4 gigahertz is, is essentially not inside anyway 4 gigahertz. Uh, there are other problems like there are inductors, they may be a uh, lot of transients may occur. So one has to take whatever signal you are processing should remain same throughout that chip area okay. And that is another issue which is a big job in design which is some way related technology because he say I want this, this also. So some of the things are actually designers forcing technologies to take care because otherwise he will not be able to get a design which works. There is always a fight between technology and design. Designers feel that technology is not competent and technologists feel designers do not know what to do. So they just give something and expect that we will do it for them. Uh, earlier times technology was lagging designers but in 2000 maybe ahead now technology is so advanced designers are does not know I can give you 1 billion, uh, 1 billion transistors but you do not have a system which requires 1 billion transistors okay maybe 3 billion. So what you will do? So there was a time in my phase of career uh, when technology was lagging, people wanted 10,000 transistor, we could give only 2,000. Then they say, okay, we want this performance, we say, no, no, I cannot do better than this. But then times have changed. Now designers are at uh, loss to actually create systems which are much more useful, cheap as well as and therefore a technology valuation is possible. There is another issue in all designs which is take, has to be taken care by technologies is called thermal design. You know if you have a 2 centimeter by 2 centimeter or a 1 and a half by 1 and a half centimeter chip 2.5 or 2.25 square centimeters and there are let us say 800 million transistor working half of them at least will be turned on hopefully by probability each will be drawing current okay. So power supply voltage into that current is the power dissipation. So look at the so many transistor turning on with so much current and voltage products. So the net power which it may consume may be watts, tens of watts to 40 watts, which essentially in a thin silicon layer actually heats the silicon. Now as soon as silicon starts heating, the device properties start changing because all most of the characteristics of uh, semiconductor device is very strong function of temperatures. 
So, if your temperatures rise too much, your circuit will fail irrespective whether it was well good design or not. Even if I had taken care of the corners as I say, the maximum temperature I expect is 50, but it may reach 65, then what will happen? So, the issue starts that your designer now tell thermal design has to be taken care of mostly by the technology people that the heat is removed faster. Okay. So, there are tricks which allows that, it is not that it is impossible. And then there are two kinds of application which is driving us. One is of course is the ultra low power uh, fee, uh, applications. Most of the battery handheld systems actually requires ultra low power device. Uh, we will show you some this how much low is low. And of course space is only good thing about space is they only want smaller things. The rest of the things they allow. So you say one chip cost 10 million dollars, NASA at least will not say no. Okay, because that's what in their some mission they need. So they will say, okay, fair, fair enough. The performance I want this. So essentially, I now I am trying to say there are in at least digital there are three kinds of circuit which has three different technologies. One is low high performance circuits. Now this high performance means high speed. So high speed circuits at the cost of something it cannot achieve anything otherwise. So you say, okay, I will allow some more power dissipation. I may allow some more area to you, but I want performance, the circuit must function at 8 gigahertz and that is it. So this is called high performance circuits. So only feature for them is speed, how fast you can do. The second kind of circuit is low power circuit. I, I do not care the speed is very low, it may be 1, 1 gigahertz or 800 megahertz like GPS, uh, this our mobile requirements, but it should not consume more than so many watts per square centimeter. Now this is called low power design in which the easiest way to reduce power is reducing the power supply. So most circuits we are trying is from say we went from 5 volt, 3 volt, 2.1 volt, 1.8 volt, 1.5 volt, 1.2 volt, 0 0.8 is now the current power supply. Uh, we may prefer to go 0.4 but something else may happen so we are right now not reaching but maybe some date will reach. So the power, second circuits are called low power. So their technology is not same as technology for performance. There are third kinds which is what most mobiles require, low standby. When it turns on, it should give higher performance, okay. But when it is not working, it should give very low power dissipation. So these are called low standby, I mean low power standby. And these are the three different digital circuit technologies which are used in commercial sense. So whenever Apple comes with something or Microsoft or Google, Google of course has sold Motorola now, uh, Lenovo one may say. So they, they actually figure it out, uh, the available in the market, what is it doing apart from, because you now want some million applications, I do not know where, how can you use all of them, but everyone wants on their uh, mobile so many applications. Each application cost lot of power, okay. So the power dissipation is a major worry in every sense nowadays except as I say space, they, dam, they have a satellite system, they may put fence, everything, cooling, liquid nitrogen, liquid helium, they may do anything for you but they say performance has to be because when the something lands on moon or a Mars, it should function irrespective okay. and that is where the money is paid for, okay. So it may not be silicon, it can be mixture, it can be anything, I only want performance. So these are third kind of technologies which are space related which are generally not known to many because they are uh, normally secret technologies. Some uh, when 10, 20 years when things are already too much advanced then they release 20 years ahead technologies. So you rely oh this was what they were doing 20 years ago, okay. But that, those technologies are very advanced but at too much other costs, okay. So please remember technology, why so many technology studies? Because each application is asking something else. And then you have to come up with this, it will meet your specs and it also should be low cost. Because if the cost is high, no one is buying it either, okay. Unless you have a monopoly and at least in many countries including US, monopoly is not allowed. Do you probably know why AMD is surviving? Because Intel supports AMD, which is their competitors, okay. Which is very funny, isn't it? Because if AMD goes away, Intel will have a problem, okay. So Intel will actually see some market for AMD so that they can have uh, unrestricted manufacture, okay. So this is how there is an issue in every sense. So technology development is very costly, very intensive, 
it takes 3 years to go to the next node and investment to 8 billion dollars roughly these days and so much investment if you do and this and if the product does not sell who will put this money okay. Of course they do sometimes they fail and then they remove 2500 jobs per year or something okay. that is what the quarter 3 this year has did not show good profits uh, 2500 are laid off okay. Thank you that is the way it is pink slip as they call. Why it happens because they expected so much sell they did not happen that is the end of it okay. So please remember I keep telling why economics matter because only economics is driving force for us. If the money is not generated no one is trying to put money in okay. This is life and one has to accept. I may like to do something great but maybe in my lab keep it okay. If it has to go to industry it should be manageable, sellable only then it will go to industry. So many of us are so enamored by electron motion including me that we forget that okay I have found something interesting but who is going to buy this one, no one because this will take so much cost and buyers will be two. So why should I someone will invest money in you but then I will get papers, I may get a paper in nature or some, I may get some big laurels fair enough but industry does not go by that, industry sees when the maturity appears in a process only then it picks up. So they themselves may be doing research, they also know what they have to do. But basic research is normally not done by industry simply because they fear, fear that if they invest there, their profits go down. So they, this is how universities survive, they fund in universities, you do keep doing research or one out of thousand I may pick it up, okay. you do it. But we survive on that, okay. 10,000 chip may egg chip chala, so we never go and tell 999, 9099 did not work. Say, oh, process is correct. We have got one chip working, okay. That is the process in lab, but that is not process in industry. In industry, 10,000 at least 9,900 must work, okay. So, the <laughs> game has to be understood that why technologists are always killed by everyone is because whatever they create, if it is not yield, enough yield it gives, that process goes down. So we may come with graphics as I show you many other new technologies but it is not going into industry simply because it is not feasible or it is not uh, very great to see that it is financially viable. So read papers and you will figure out uh, why so many technologies have come and gone also. Uh, there are different constraints one sees uh, for example if you have a portable device battery is the major cause how it should not. Of course, so one of the thing which I will suggest you leave all microelectronics and look for battery research. Okay. If you can create a battery which has large ampere hours in a smaller area, I think you have a, a mine of gold with you. Okay. If that is what you can do, let us say you have 10, 10 ampere hours or 20 ampere hours in a small tablet, uh, I suppose many will rush to you only chase you out everywhere okay, if you create such a technology. So all this IC is not worth that if you can create one battery which is can create large ampere hours for you okay. So look for fuel cell, hydrogen cell, make try every other thing uh, like Edison try 400 experiment or 4000 experiment maybe wait okay. But that is something boring so people hey there is nothing great in this and therefore no such research happens in IITs where it should actually we are technology people okay. They, <laughs> Telecom military of course as I said they actually look for reliability and uh, that is where the money is of course they are ready to pay money for and there are um, high volume products which are called off shelf products uh, which have actually cost wise like a DRAM no one wants to sell at say 5000 rupees no one will buy even if it is 16 GB or 256 GB. So when asked to reduce the price and if you reduce the price the power price is essential in package. As I yesterday said chips are very cheap okay, it is the package which cost hell. So if I tell you give a project, of course I do not give this project these days, but if you are give a let us work on a project, uh, pro, uh, some project on package design, say but where is electrical there, but that is the problem okay, because electrical people feel we should only look for like at least microelectronics, where if there is no electron what is there, you know there is nothing there okay, but that is the money, money is in package actually, think of it. Some in, koi in mein se entrepreneur ban sakte. Okay, uh, the problem in technology started after 95 ahead, 
when the, there is a switch, transistor works like a switch they say for logic. So, if it is turned on essentially the switch is on connected ok. The, there are few currents which I can say, one expect that there is no current from the control side into, into the switch ok, whichever reason like in case of MOS there is no gate current ok, we expect this but it does not happen, there is a gate current ok. We expect I to be 0 across the gate but it does, insulator are not very good insulators as we thought. Okay. Therefore, current flows through them because of the high fields. We expect maximum current or in, as much as current I push from the input to go to output, we believe that no attenuation will be there, but that is not true. In fact, there is a arm resistance which will actually not allow all the current to go. Okay. So, another ideal switch we thought that infinite current can go and no current uh, from the control side is only ideal switch. In reality, when we started scaling devices, newer MOS, lower MOS size transistors came, we figured out the on current, uh, the gate current is not very small. Even this lateral current, which we believe below the threshold when the transistor is off, should be 0, is not 0. It is in fact very large current these days. And because of that, ideal switch is only ideal. In reality, it has too much leakage. Leakage means what? power loss, this is unused power loss and that is one reason why most of the low power research is controlling this leakage paths okay, to reduce this leakage current because in standby mode in specific you can see that the currents are flowing even if it is leakage currents and if they are larger they will drain the battery. So, you keep your mobile next day morning there is nothing inside okay, because of leakage paths. Unless you power off completely, there is no way power shutoffs comes. Okay, so this now there is a issue. There is a technology, as I say, low power technology came out of this because they want this to be as small as possible. So the whole transistors have to be differently thought to give uh, lower powers. So the, every technology comes from requirement of a user, and he said, "This is what I want." Uh, as I say, as I start scaling. In the case of on currents, if a mass transistor, the IV characteristics is something like this. Okay. Now one can see from here, one believes the off current is below threshold is very small, but if you scale even this current at 0 Vt or small Vt, the current is very high. So off current, off current means transistor is switched off officially, input VGS is smaller than Vt, but there is a current. This is very worrying us the most right now, how to actually bring them back to, but if you reduce Vt, this will happen, that is the problem. We are scaling, we are reducing VD, VDD, we are reducing Vt. If you reduce Vt, the power, low power actually off power increases. So now here is a case, whether you want really low power or you want off power to be less. So design and design means new technology, he says, you do this, this, I want this. So why every time we come back and say that new technology has appeared because someone else is asking I want this and then uh, one has to plan, device people has to think, get models, then we use those models, create new technologies which will fit into those. Okay. And that is why the research in technology is advancing day by day, though much of the industry is not changing very much because as I say they want the standard products. So, the new technologies go 10 years or 5 years ahead afterwards they go into the actual fab. Okay. Okay. So, if you look for data from Intel, IBM, AMD, Motorola, Lucent, many companies everyone has tried and one is trying to reduce the, uh, if you reduce the dimensions, uh, the current does not remain, keep increasing as the scaling law says, actually it saturates, you can say it saturates which essentially means why scale below 0.1 micron less than 100 nanometer if on current is that way speed cannot be improved irrespective okay, because on current is fixed. Okay. Then if I want to increase speed somehow I must reduce the capacitance because C dv by dt all that I have in hand or I fool the circuit saying that oh you still can run faster though my current is only this. There are methods called paralleling, pipelining, this is designers will tell you. If I am teaching design course there I will tell in case I am not teaching. Uh, so, the circuit methods are now searched because technology says 
at these technologies currents cannot be improved for the on state okay do whatever it is okay so whenever you do something you, you have to understand i am giving something at the cost of receiving something so now i say i scale down everything i will put more devices more 8 million transit 800 million transit output but your speed is not improving okay so technology you are reduced to 14 to 11 nanometers but speed is not going so externally something has to be done to improve your speeds okay by speeds i already said video games okay, nothing else uh, this is some kind of statistic from intel many years ago uh, this is uh, uh, this is leakage current and one can see 50 percent of the is already reaching as the leakage path okay so we are worried that later as i say in 30 nanometer down technology the off current was 66 percent so why do a circuit which is losing power without doing anything okay but that is the game okay. uh, there are also these limits as i say just to show you different devices systems which are available in market uh, there is a operational frequency varies from 1 gigahertz to say 100 gigahertz different systems are there mobile digital av or computing network routers servers each has different technology because each has them different requirement so when i say technologies i am actually looking for the product is that point clear to you why so many technologies because technology needs something uh, uh, product needs something so technology is scattering that kind of this, there is no universal technology okay each kind of applications because like for example cellular works around 899 uh, megahertz or 1 gigahertz at best so the kind of thing we can say sub threshold current we want there should be very low because low power i want okay but frequencies i, I do not want very high so i may probably able to get something out of it but if someone say i want 100 gigahertz and low power I am not achieving because then I am going to higher leakages okay. So every product has a different line and different companies catered to different products. Not every company enters every market because that is the way they cannot survive okay. A lot of cost at the because of that. Uh, this is something which in 2000 we tried and I will show you the latest one. We were trying to say that if I start scaling the uh, dimensions the oxide thickness of a MOS transistor also scales down. So for example by scaling down to say 22 nanometers or even lower the oxide thickness required is less than 5 m strong okay half a nanometer half nanometer. Now if your oxide thickness is half nanometer or lower is called thickness of the oxide or insulator one atom of silicon dioxide will require 5 is silic silicon layer as a 5 m strong dia okay, lattice. So I cannot have less than one mono layer uh, you want to have reduction lower, lower than that. So I made a trick what I did is I said fine I cannot scale down less than say 10 nanometers of this 1 nanometer. So I did something like this this is my capacitor this is my insulator this is my gate this is a standard capacitor this is a mass capacitor the capacitance of this oxide whatever it is, is epsilon ox ks epsilon 0 multiplied by area divided by oxide thickness so if you scale you reduce dimensions w and l a area also reduces by square law oxide thickness goes linearly by the the ratio we want to scale down let us say s is the ratio so T ox by s a will go a by s square okay, because area you reduce that much by each dimension. You can look at it this dimension and this dimension if I scale the area reduces by a square okay. So I reduce area but I reduce oxide thickness by only s okay. Now if I start say oxide has to be less than 5 m strong I cannot I know. So I said okay area I cannot reduce too much because that is decided by the other current set requirements. So I figured out if I somehow increase my oxide thickness proportion to reduction in oxide I mean uh, dielectric constant of oxide is used proportion how much I lose in oxide and let us say I decide 10 Armstrong is I can grow 
minimum or maybe 50 I can grow, then as many times I have a dielectric material which is that much dielectric constant. So let us say I cannot go less than some 4 times this, so I increase dielectric material which has 4 times dielectric constant of silicon dioxide. These are called high K. Silicon dioxide has a dielectric constant of 3.9. We are looking for materials which has at least 12, 16, 25, maybe 100. Okay. Because if I increase this insulator thickness, then I can have a more reliability. I can create so many atoms I can put there without worries. Okay. The other problem started if I have very thin oxide which is what let us say it is less than 10 Armstrongs, uh, this is essentially punch through that means little electric field will allow electrons to go through the thin oxide. So, you cannot have too less thickness of material there because it will then short circuit the gate okay. which means I cannot really work on very thin oxides anyway. Okay. Of course, there are other problems, pinholes and many other issues in oxide of thin uh, nature, but this is one problem of this, I cannot scale down thickness too much and if I cannot, the only possibility was to go for a higher dielectric constant materials. So, the new technologies are high K dielectric technologies and not silicon dioxide. Okay. This is the only difference which new technology. But to create a high K is not very easy because the materials which should stand silicon dioxide is an ideal material in every sense. Okay. It is the greatest material probably I see people think. It has a very high dielectric constant, it has a I mean very high dielectric strength, it can go up to 10 to the power 7 volt per centimeter fields. Uh, it is unhable in most cases except fluorine atoms, it, it cannot be etched away easily. It is very hard, it remains into its, oh, it said uh, uh, melting point is 1900 or everything what you think the best for an insulator, it has a band gap of 9 electron volt, so no electron can easily go through it, all possible goodness was in silicon dioxide. Much easier to grow silicon oxidize your oxide, so everything was in favor of silicon dioxide, we still are using, do not think, I have, it is not being used, but the time has come and we say. Oh, if you cannot do less than this, what do we do? So, the new attempt is now to look for what they call high K materials okay, and what are the choice, we will see later. Is that point clear? So, why high K have come? Because as scaling goes, oxide thickness reached limits now. Okay. So, I, oxide means silicon dioxide. So, we are now looking for new materials. Uh, it was a predicted as early as in 2001, what will be the microprocessor trend and this is very inter interesting to show you. Uh, since 1972, 2002, 2008, what Intel thought and by prediction and by do doing design that they will go for 30 gigahertz frequencies with 25 nanometer length, gate lengths, okay, oxide of 700 nan uh, Armstrongs, uh, 70 Armstrongs. Uh, what essentially they were looking for tera instruction per second that is the ultimate aim everyone is looking for. We figured out if, do, if we do so the heat was the major power okay. what is what has happened in that. The power dissipation using the older technology 2002 one uh, 10 watt per centimeter square was the temperature I mean wattage it was consuming dense power density which is like a hot plate. Okay. In 2000 C when we went to the newer technology, it became 100 watts per centimeter square which is like a surface of a nuclear, the temperature at the surface of a nuclear reactor. In 2010, this increased to 1000 watt per centimeter square which is like the temperature at the rocket nozzle okay. and in 2016, it may become 10,000 watt per centimeter like a sun surface. So, the major worries are actually coming from somewhere else. Okay. You may say I improve technology, I improve speed, but at what cost? Okay. So, one has to understand why technologies get limited even if they think to be very ideal. When I do simulations, I get everything excellent, but in reality nothing works. Okay. The reason is there is a gap between what happens and how much you understood. That is why research is to be done, what is happening and what I did not understand is what is major effort is going on. Okay. So, just to give you 
this heat is major worry. So that is why I say work for packaging which can remove faster heat, you are your money. Okay. The another problem came in technology now is as I scaled down, uh, all the parameters did not remain constant over a wafer or even on a die or even on a transistors. Okay. So for a, if you have a 12 inch wafer, each die may be 2 centimeter by 2 centimeter, let us say there may be 10,000 million transistor or 10 million transistor there, the parameters process parameters like thickness of everything which I thought should go everywhere is not everywhere same. So there is a variation going on it is called variability. Since there is a variability on every parameter I do, the net result if I see and this is a old technology graph from Intel, I have my own my student have worked recently. So for a 0.1 micron, 0.18 process they have measured 1000 samples they figured out there is a threshold shift of 30 millivolt. In a 0.8 or uh, 1.2 millivolt, it does not seem to be very big, but in a 0.8 and this 10 percent which will go there, maybe 0 0.6, uh, 60 millivolt to 100 millivolts, 10 percent variation is expected now. And if that happens, my threshold will be already everywhere. So, all chips will be working at different speed, different power dissipation, sometimes logic may even fail analog gains will not be obtained. In some chips they are working, some chips they are not working. My design is ideal for everyone but it is not working. So now the question is how to take a design, designer should take care in the process variation which will appear irrespective of what I do. Okay. So now there is a earlier designers used to be computer scientists in most cases, electrical entered little late and they always used to look down this E student, E people or oh, technology. Now they have to come to our uh, this and say please tell us sir what can we do, okay. that is the time. Okay. Because unless they understand what is happening they cannot design. Okay. So now it is a co-design uh, goes with both computer scientists and electrical chemistry civil everyone sit together and actually see what a chip can do best possible for a given technology. So this is something a new. That is why we have always been teaching microelectronics independent of everything whether you like or you do not like. We teach devices, we teach technology, we teach systems, we teach design. Why? Because we believe in 2005 onwards everyone must know everything. Okay. See earlier older technologies if you have an inverter the path delay was known. The reason was if you plot the probability of getting one delay let us say propagation delay TPD it was almost constant okay, at a given value. Okay. But now it is Gaussian. So what VT I should use? I do not know. What delay I will get? I do not know. So if circuit is performing differently at different point of the chip and at this, so what we do now in design is we look for what we call the slowest path called critical path and actually design for it. So I know in somewhere I am over designing because that is the unfortunate but at least the least one will work better. So a lot of money is invested to get critical part designs. Okay. Lot of area goes, lot of parallelism has to be done but that is the only way variability can be handled now. Okay. This is what I said as I scale down many things I cannot do either by economic or by physics and this is called red, red brick wall cannot go and as I said humans are very smart, uh, newer technologies will appear and have already appeared. These are called nanotech, CAEN is called self assembled chemically electronic nanotechnologies and also in lithography we are working on technology called extreme ultraviolet EUVs. Uh, last 8 years there is an effort all across the world to design a system of EUV which we are not able to. One think of it, what is this EUV why it has come? The smallest feature lithography can produce is the given by its wavelength. Okay. Optics says it is less than wavelength, you cannot separate because there will be a diffraction around. So we want to separate two lines, areas, so we must have wavelength which is of the order. But we have made very nice games, we are the lo lowest of the wavelength we are using is 193 nanometer UV. Okay, 193 which is still 2014 also we are working. We are trying to see 
it goes to 10 nanometers, then I can make 3 nanometer device. Now. So, I am trying to reduce this. So, we are trying to push the energy E is equal to SC by lambda. So, I am trying to see whether energy can be pushed, okay. And if energy is pushed, lambda will actually go down. So, we are looking for optical lithography, okay, even now ultraviolet, which has a wavelength of the order of tens of nanometers, not 193. But as humans are ingenious, I am genius, they actually have figured out even with 193 people have made 11 nanometer transistors. Of course, there are issues, there are cost involved, there are reality issues, but this is called multiple water based new lithography techniques which we have worked. Uh, however, it is cost. So, they are working 8 to 10 years on EUV and I know many uh, universities are fewer industries, I know many of them who are working. And they every time they meet, they say, oh, next year. But this next year syndrome is very bad because when the next year appears, it becomes present year. So, the next year, okay. So, never reach next year because next year becomes present again next year. So, last 8 years, UV has not come. But if it comes, this 5 nanometer is achievable very easily. This is the progression. Uh, we started with 90 nanometer with gate length of 50. And by 2004, we already reached 10 nanometer gate lengths, 22 nanometer. No, today we are working on 16 nanometer mostly, and uh, 11 is of course possible. Uh, it has already shown it's working. Seven also has worked. So I don't know at the end where it will go zero probably, but uh, this is what is the way progress is done. So for each of them, there is a different technology constraints and they have to be solved and that is how the new technology, new node means new technology. After all, electron wavelength will decide how best features you can create, that is what I just now said. 10 nanometer was initially possible, we are looking for 1 nanometer now, let us see whether we can. Okay. Just look at this 5 nanometer gate length CMOS, is a real nano device, okay. it has a length of 18 silicon atoms, okay. you can see a count. And in 2003 itself, itself, this device was made. Okay. So, it is not that one is not able to make uh, lower technology nodes, but if I make millions of them, only 2, 3 may work, may be good in IIT, but uh, no industry buys it actually. Okay. So, the, not that technology is not known, but reliability is the major crux which is not still achievable. IVs have worked, everything looked to be a good switch, a good switching technologies. Uh, there is another problem which is called, okay, maybe this. As you scale down the thickness of channel, I mean this, uh, or sorry, gate thickness, uh, one can see that we always thought electron cannot normally cross the, they have to have energy enough to cross, but there is a possibility of tunnel, okay, because of variety of effects. 3 nanometers you do it will just cross. Okay. Then there is the atomic distance, 3 Armstrongs, <laughs> what else? 2.61 is the minimum bond length, that is it. So, you cannot put less than atom, <laughs> otherwise what will do? However, all said and done, but no one knows the future. <laughs> okay. Today what I am saying, in 88, 90s when I was teaching I said something, which is proved absolutely wrong by now. So, today if I predict something in another 10 years, 20 years, it will be proved absolutely wrong. So, I do not want to predict great future, but there is something I see fundamental limits. Uh, 0.8 nanometer for example has only 3 atoms uh, distance, 0.8 nanometer means 3 silicon atoms. So, we are really looking for numbers which are countable. In quantum mechanics, we have large number and therefore statistics was allowed. If I have 1, 2, 3, how can I, how I will say, okay, this electron moves with this velocity. So, what is quantum in it? You can say it is, the effect is because of quantization, but actually classical mechanics can be applied. I have 1 electron, this is the mass, this is the field, it should go with this. So, now the issue has started, is our physics is also okay, if I go down to this. All device people uh, talk too big, is that valid now? Your model may be good, but whether it is valid? So, there is an issue coming on even in physics now whether it is good enough to have models which will work for less than 10 nanometer, than 10 nanometers. So, we are now in the limitation, do you believe this or do not, your choice, okay. 
that I say there is one solution is the higher dielectric constant. How do I make high k? I figured out there are certain materials high which are higher dielectric constant and also they actually fit into silicon technology that is most a compatibility. They should have band offsets, they should have good dielectric constant, very thermal instabilities. So we figured out hafnium oxide is ideal candidate for many years. Even now most of the silicon chips coming from Intel Ti are using hafnium oxide, maybe little nitrogen they are called hafnium oxide nitride, but that is what the new technologies they have. Uh, me and my colleagues in uh, Tokyo Institute, they have been working earlier than me. I just go two months, touch hand there, I am also part. Uh, we, are, we are working on new material then, of course that also new third material has appeared, lanthanum oxide. Now lanthanum has a higher dielectric constant than hafnium, but it has compatibility with silicon process is not very good, but it has a very... Uh, we do not need much thicker in interfacial layer between silicon and silicon dioxide, I mean uh, lanthanum oxide, otherwise you need a buffer in between. So most of the research in last 5-7 years uh, I was involved in Japan was on lanthanum. We also, they, their group is also worked on europium, uh, gallodium, Euro, uh, einsteinian, all kinds of high materials which are unknown to us uh, from the periodic table only when you see O, you see O, these are also materials. So we started looking many of those, their oxides, uh, which should be, first thing is they should be good dielectric, okay. So good dielectric should be good dielectric strength, reproducible technology wise and compatible to CMOS silicon process, that is major, okay. So you have very limited research, but we are still working. Americanum also was tried, failed, it is very leaky. Uh, as I said, there is a word we use called EOT, equivalent oxide thickness. Silicon dioxide is major thickness. So, 1 nanometer EOT is for silicon dioxide. Equivalent to this multiply by dielectric constant and that is equivalent oxide. So, even if dielectric constant is higher, we divide by equal to silicon dioxide and find what is equivalent thickness. So, we started with 1 nanometer and uh, current this is around 0.2 nanometers also can be possible for EOTs, okay. 11, 11 nanometer process first half of 2015 or 2016 will be actually on production, uh, we hope so, only, I only can predict. Uh, this is what high case looks like, a actual device which was made in TIT and uh, we have a metal gate instead of silicon gate which also is another change in technology and this is a high K gate based chip design. This has a small 4 bit microprocessor which has a bank of SRAMs. Okay. This has a EOT of 1 nanometers. We have worked on 0.48 okay, and it gives good IV characteristics, that is what the importance is. We are the way Intel works, uh, Intel has been working on process which is called uh, one of the major interest in high speed was if you look at it since the most uh, one of the most important thing in current is I is proportional to mu in MOS transistors, IDS is proportional to mu C ox, okay. So the speed is limited by available mobilities, so in silicon at a given high fields, typically it may be around 600 centimeter square per volt second is the highest mobility one can get in a MOS structure. More normally may get even 400, 450, best device may be 600, 1200 is, 1300 is this actual bulk material, but at the surface this is the only possibility because of scatterings. Now if I want to improve this, I must somehow see scattering be reduced and if scattering is reduced. I can certainly or I have a different material silicon instead of silicon which has higher mobility like gallium arsenide 8500. So I have at least 6 times higher okay. But then the issue started coming something like this if I velocity is normally mobility times the electric field. So if I plot this we believe it is something only linear but in reality most semiconductors actually show something like this or if not falling saturates okay which means after certain electric field irrespective what 
you do the velocity is fixed, current is q into v n to n number of carriers, q n v is the current. So, if v saturates that is the end of it. Okay. So, how can I increase the current by increasing electric field because I get saturated. So, I must somehow have a technology or somehow have a material you still remain here. So, I increase the field I must get higher currents okay. and therefore, mobile or mobility itself should be high enough slope is something like this. Okay. If that happens then I have higher speed circuits. Okay. So, what uh, Intel is trying or uh, have been trying la during last 10 years, they figured out mobility varies with strains. Okay. If you know you are a mechanical engineer first year some way, we have learnt uh, Young's modulus and many other stat simple thing. There we said that strain is proportional to strain and if it exceeds that certain value which is called from there permanent strain appears. So, we figured out that if I have a strain material in one direction uh, the mobility where carriers are going in that direction can improve. Okay. So, if I put instead of normal silicon the source drain made of silicon germanium then it gives a permanent strain because silicon germanium lattices are not same uh, lattice constants. So, there is a strain and they give larger mobility along the lateral directions. Okay. This is essentially called compressive strains. So, you have a large hole mobility in P channel device. For N channel what they did that instead of normal silicon uh, dioxide covers they actually put nitrides and they give transverse uh, sorry the tensile strength in the material which actually improved for N channel device the mobility in lateral directions. So, now the new technology they have is not new 10 years silicon germanium here and silicon nitride at the top they are actually making mobilities much higher compared to what the limit was 600 we can go at least to 800 to 900 now or even 1000. So, these are look these are only technology which we, we figured out we can do this. Okay. However, if you want higher then go for other materials okay. look for silicon I mean silicon carbide you may look for silicon nitride silicon nitride based transistors carbon nanotubes refined based tubes all kinds of newer processes will be required if I want much higher mobilities than what you are now getting and the whole research rests on this. So, there is a search for new material for gate, new high K material, new channel materials keep working every year new technology appears new different for source drain. So, even if you say that so much is known still there is so much to do. Okay. So, do not think that oh it is all over, it's nothing is over till it is over, the, the phrase saying nothing is over till it is over. Okay. So, till it is over is too far. Okay, maybe few other slides I will show you in the last. What is going to have technology progression? We went from bulk CMOS, we went for uh, fully depleted silicon uh, uh, SOI, silicon on insulator devices, strain silicon we are looking for high gates this is called double gate FET which is very first better MOS transistor created. We can make third gate few more gates similar is called tri gates or double uh, triple fin gate or multi fin gates which is what Intel is working. So, these will give better performance compared to because there is a uh, problem which I never said when I scale down there is a effect called short channel effect because of that mobility actually is reduced. So, whatever you are trying to achieve actually it is lost simply because and there is a possibility of tunneling in the oxide because of short channels. Now, because of this problem of scaling we are looking for newer technologies in which these effects can be minimized even if I scale down and these structures which I show showing you essentially takes care of that. Okay. This is bulk CMOS, this is fully depleted silicon on insulator, strained silicon, double gate, triple gate silicon germanium heterostructures then now we are also looking for germanium transistor back to what we were early in 1960s 40s we are looking germanium again okay it has more advantage but germanium on silicon not only pure germanium we are looking for nano wires we are looking for nano tubes we are looking for single transistor devices we are looking for spin devices which are magnetically controlled so there are number of devices under which may have 2 nanometer kind of structures 
and may actually do very high speed performance, maybe low power performance. But why they are not reached so fast here, they also can have optical devices made out of that. So the problem there is all this cost and reliability. If you can make systems which are highly reliable, low cost only then this may go into fab of a company. But effort is on and I think there is no reason why we will not be able to reach and the most optimist. There are two kinds of people, uh, you know, as I think many people know, if the glass is half filled, say an optimist say it is half full, a pessimist says it is half empty, it is a matter of your way, okay. This is the carbon nanotube which is what it looks like, it is a hexagonal structure. And there is a new material, a new uh, nanowire has appeared which is based on graphene. Graphene is a uh, one form of a carbon which has a hexagonal diamond lattice, okay. And because it is one of the hardest material right now available on the earth, okay. So one is looking for graphene as the new material for interconnect between either interconnect or between instead of normal carbon nanotube we are trying to put graphene uh, films there. Uh, it is suggested electron behave in circuitry made of ultra thin layers of graphite known as graphene. It suggests the material could provide foundation for a new generation of nanometer scale devices that manipulate electrons as waves and that is most important. Electrons are not no more particles, they will act like a EM wave okay and that is what we are looking for. And therefore we can make photonic systems out of this material okay because we need photons okay. So that is something what is coming. This is the major feature of people who are looking in devices. The band structure of graphene is very funny. There is no band gap like silly semiconductors. There is no overlap like metals, okay. But conduction band and valence band meet at one point at 1K, okay. So you can control the current motion only when you reach that K. So that if you are away from that, no current, if you are at that this momentum, you get currents on and off, okay. So graphene can now be also looked as a switch device which is very recent and people are looking for it. Look at it, the normal band gap for silicon is has a band gap of 1.1 EV between conduction band and a valence band. There is no, there is only one point where it has common point. Uh, 2004, two scientists, Andrew Jim and Noel Slow both from Manchester University won the Nobel Prize for their graphene research. Before that, carbon is known for two, 200 years earlier or maybe earlier. Coal is known many, many years. Devices people also know as early as 30s or 20s. Microphones were used with carbon films. So it is not that carbon was unknown, okay. But it took almost another 80 years before graphene based devices were thought, okay. So someone has to even Whatever people say, na, Newton could see that apple falling, but apples are still falling, something else is also falling, but we do not care, but uh, Newton cared that. Okay. So same way things are still happening, you have still chance to win the Nobel Prize. This is what it is. Uh, this is a normal mass transistor and this is graphene has a small film below. So that if the electron move through the graphene area, their conductivity is very, very high. Typically it could be infinite also in ideal case. So huge currents can actually for no arm resistance, okay. So it can be very high speed device. This is what is being tried. So we are working for a, uh, I do not know whether you are so far now. There is a microwave band which goes around 100 gigahertz microwaves or millimeter waves. Then we have an optical range which goes around 1000 microns and above, okay, infrared and above. There is an in between band which is called terahertz band and it is not being used by anyone. And this is the band which graphene may allow actually, okay. And that is why this material is now ideal material for photonics, ideal material for semiconductor based research and ideal material for EM based theories. So this material probably may actually revolutionize our thinking. So new technologies are coming. Last but not the least, compared to graphene, there is another example we are trying. Can I replay, what was my problem when the carrier go from source to drain, they scatter and therefore mobility goes down. If I keep a vacuum, no interactions, mean free path is infinite, so all carriers will go. If I do this, then the vacuum tubes are 1906 I am bringing back, okay, that is what they did, okay. 
So, I am now trying to create a vacuum tube in a semiconductor. Okay. How to create this vacuum here is a game which is not so easy, but possibly yes. Okay. And therefore, tomorrow you may say a solid state vacuum tube, okay, <laughs> which is the uh, okay, we will move further. There are many quantum dot devices, many applications. This is interesting. Many of these devices, which Coulomb, these are called Coulomb blocket devices, they work on tunneling. There is a lion and there is a human being. Of course, now you can say leopard. Okay. There is a barrier. There is a barrier. And uh, maybe we have made a fencing which was very small or probably has cut many places, which are reasons. So, leopards could not climb for some years. One or two years, leopard did not come to our side because the barrier was too big for them. What they did, some humans helped them and cut the wires, make a ditch. So now they can cross across this barrier without climbing and they can chase you. Okay. This is tunneling. Based on this, the new devices may come which are called Coulomb blockets. The advantage is when they cannot go off state, when they can go on state switch. Okay. Very fast, tunneling is very high speed phenomena. So one expects very high speed transitions coming out of Coulomb blocket devices. Last one, uh, Freeman is a very famous physicist. Uh, he made what I want to talk about is the problem of manipulating and controlling things on a small scale because they used to have always macro scale. Physics always used to work on macro scales. So, why cannot we write entire 24 volumes of Encyclopedia Britannica on the head of a pin? Why do not think like this? Okay. That is micro or nano structures. Okay. This is Finman's idea in 59. We are still working for him. Okay. By the way, he was a famous Nobel laureate and very funny person, very interesting person they say. The last part is there are some molecules which can self-align in solutions or by applying light. These are called self-aligned structures. Okay. So you can see there are some materials you can inject, the atoms will come and self-align, no lithography. You decide where they will sit there. Okay. So something may appear. Of course, success, but again, large numbers is not a success. The problem will in lithography can be solved or not solved is the major crux. Aging is should be dry or H, wet. Okay, so last but not the least, I may say, limitation of CMOS in 10 years. We are looking for 8 electrons per bit. Manufacturing cost 50 billion dollars per fab line. I said 8. Now it may become this. Moore's law scaling to end questions. We do not know. However, humans are great. We are now looking for a brave new world which has come from one Professor Nathan from Berkeley. Uh, you can see every kind of system can be built on silicon or substrate. Okay. You have a CMOS devices, we have silicon germanium heterojunction devices, we have fiber optics connection, we have LEDs, silicon LEDs, we have silicon germanium optical waveguides. We have silicon germanium optical detectors. We have quantum dot based devices. Okay, all in one. Okay, all in one. So any kind of system you think probably is doable if only you apply your mind and time. Okay, this is interesting. This will be shown on your my, my website. So one last uh, word for you: Do not believe a textbook statement or a researcher statement blindly, including me. Never give up. As no one knows future, there would always be a solution. Think, think and think or wait for the time when someone else will think for you. <laughs> that is most, most of us do that. Okay. So as much as you can think, probably there is a hope. Many uh, slides were taken from various people, various sites. So I acknowledge all of them. Yuai Hiroshi is my close friend. He gave me many slides. Shekhar Borker from Intel gave me slide, Professor Lundstrom, Harriet, Marcia, they also gave their slide. So these slides are as per permissions and they are not shown without their permissions. Thank you.